All right, welcome every all right, so welcome everybody to this session. Um, it is my great pleasure to be the one to introduce Ellie L. Um, I'm not sure whether it's from Elvira or Elvira Bainport. Um, she's a gifted education teacher from grades from uh, two to six at an elementary school in Hattiesburg. And what is that? Is it Minnesota, Massachusetts? Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And um, she has a specialist degree in reading instruction. She has a master's in gifted education and a, uh, two PAs, a dual bachelor's in elementary education and Spanish. Uh, prior to, the, to gifted, she taught second grade uh, for three years in elementary Spanish for three years. Her mission and philosophy revolves around using technology to expose and connect her students to a variety of people, places, and ideas. In addition to her role as a gifted education teacher, she also facilitates a technology integration discussion group on edutopia.org. She leads technology workshops for her school site and enjoys attending state and national gifted and technology conferences. Just recently, her proposal to present on Skype in the gifted classroom was approved for the 58th Annual Convention of the National Association for Gifted Children in New Orleans, Louisiana, in November 2011. Yeah! And on a more personal note, I just met Elle because of Arscon when I became her moderator and we came together a couple of times to check the room and practice and see if we, we knew everything and she is the sweetest, funnest person to be around that I've met in a while. So Elle, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ceci, for that wonderful introduction. With a show of smiley faces, how many of you have used Skype? Put on a smiley face real quick. And then with the sad face, show me how many of you have not used Skype but are interested in using Skype. Anyone? I got a few people. Okay, a few newbies. Not bad. Oh, yes, good. Okay, not bad. So again, um, Elvira, also known as Elle on Twitter. I love you know me. And I'm very happy to present Skype in the classroom today and share some resources, some tips, and some places where you can find projects. As I speak through this presentation, I'm sorry if I speak fast, it's just who I am as a person and I'm a little nervous, but also I have a lot of information I wanted to share it all with you. But, um, but as I'm speaking, I want you to really think about your context and how maybe you can uh, take this information and apply it to your context and maybe what will work best for your students, because that's what this is all about, helping you out. So getting started, for those of you who don't have Skype, you're going to need a few a little bit of equipment. Um, obviously, we're going to need a computer with a laptop with internet connection. You need a webcam because Skype basically is a video chat program that's going to let you see the person you're calling, which is a really cool thing. And so you need that webcam so that the people on the other end of the line can see you and then you can see them. And a lot of times you're going to have that webcam either external, like I have it here in the picture. You can buy one, like I have the one I'm using now is external. And a lot of laptops, they come already with built-in webcams. Uh, I recommend that you have a projector so that you can project your image, what's on your screen, as you can see in my picture, what you see on my screen, you can see on the projected on the wall. And this helps out with your classes so that if you have larger classes, they can all see what's going on. So they don't have to huddle around the computer. You don't have 30 kids huddled in front of the computer. That's very uncomfortable. And a lot of people have had this question before, and I'm sorry I'm going to ignore the chat box. I know a lot of you are writing and probably asking some questions. Let's save the questions to the end of the presentation. So if you have something, it doesn't interrupt the flow, so like we can just get through this and then we can save the last few minutes for questions. Okay, I'm not trying to ignore y'all. But uh, I had a question actually. Someone told me, as you see in the picture here, illustrated, I have um, a smart board and I had a Promethean board before then. And so that's not necessarily needed. Some people think that they need that Promethean board or that interactive whiteboard to do stuff, and you really don't. For the classroom, I'll recommend you can even use like the old the screens that you pull down. Or, or a white wall, I've seen another class in Skype where they use a plain white wall to project their image. So it can be just something that simple. Because all it is used for really is just to project your image so that your whole class can see. And then the last two items here, the last two pieces of equipment, is a speaker so that you can hear because I plug it in because using the computer speakers and the laptop speakers are not very ideal when you have a larger class size. So you need those speakers so that you can hear clearly. And of course an external microphone helps you 
um, project what you're trying to say to the other class. They can hear you better too. So that especially if you have a lot of kids in the room. And then how do you get started? So for those of you who haven't gone on there yet, here is the website. Let me get my little pointer here. Uh, Skype.com. You go on there, it's free. You download it to your laptop or your computer. You create a profile. And basically there's a few features that you need to become familiar with because you have what's called a contact list. And some of you already probably have that contact list with families and relatives. Um, but basically what you want to do is a video call. If you see the call feature, the video versus voice. And I do some voice calls to practice maybe if I'm not in the mood to kind of, this is with my friends mostly or family. I do video voice calls. But when you're doing it in a classroom setting, you want to do that video call because you want to, you want your students to see what's going on at the other end. That's what makes it so lively and enriching. And then, of course, you have the chat feature. If you look, let me get my little arrow in my other hand. See down here? That's your little toolbar that you're going to see when you make the call. You have several features here, but the two that I like the best are the chat feature. You're able to pull that up as you're Skyping because it helps us to kind of articulate or if, you, if you can't understand what the other person is saying or they can't understand you, you can type it in that chat box. Or also, too, when we share websites, is this, I do this more, more so personally, when I share a website with a teacher friend, I'm Skyping like, oh, this is a wonderful website, and I just t type it in the text box and they can automatically click on it during the call. So it's a pretty neat feature. And then the final feature that I love to use is my screen sharing feature. And basically that's just when you share what's on your screen. And I use that mostly with my students when I want to share like a video. I had a partner class show us their iMovie videos and that was so exciting. So she did the screen, screen sharing feature. It's very simple to use when you get on there and practice it. And it's going to be on that toolbar. And it's kind of different I think for Mac and PCs, but once you get on you can come from, become familiar with it. But we use it for the videos and we use the screen, screen sharing for pictures. When I had my students draw illustrations, sometimes it's kind of difficult when you have to put it up to the camera. They can't really see the detail very much. So what I do is I save, I scan their pictures that they want to share for the Skype call beforehand, and then I share it as a JPEG. I put it up on my screen and it's enlarged and it's a lot, has a lot more detail. So that screen sharing feature is something that you may want to consider when you do your Skype call. Now the next question is you have it set up. So where do I find people to Skype with? That's always a big question. And here are my, my whole long list of favorite places. But well, we're going to start at the bottom. Here's my little hand. I don't know if you can see my little hand. Maybe I should use the other hand. There we go. Okay. My recommendation is to start with people that you know. A lot of you already Skype with a lot of your friends and your relatives. So why not have them do a Skype call with your class? And because you already feel comfortable with your family and your friends, have them do like a little short call just to practice, just so that your students can see what it's like and what to do during the call. And also, too, another recommendation I was given is to start with your same class at your same school in the, in the district. So to give them an idea, one good example that we did, our middle school had a technology fair, and they were featuring Skype as one of the tools. But see, the teacher, the gifted teacher at the, the middle school, he, wasn't, he didn't have these contacts already, but he wanted to show his students what Skype looked like. So he said, hey, Ms. Diampo, would you mind if, you know, we Skype just so the kids can see and you can tell them what it's about. And so I said, sure. And so what we did was Skype with them. I know it was within the district, but the kids got to see it. And it was so funny because I got to see some of my older students. They're like, is that you, Ms. Diampo? And I was like, yes, it's me. So it's another wonderful way to do it. So you can do that or you can just practice. Now let's move up to the top. I don't want to get too much into my stories because that will probably take the whole presentation. This, my favorite website are going to be the number one you see here, the Skype in the Classroom. This is a wonderful website. It was launched last year. Now it's live and available for everyone. You log in. You can log in with your Skype user ID, which is awesome. And there's a big, growing, large community of people who are ready to Skype. So what you do is you look at their profiles. They post uh, project outlines. You can add them to your friend list. You can comment on their uh, project list and then exchange emails. So it's a real secure site. So you can do all that and start building your contact list through that. And the neat thing about the Skype in the Classroom is that once you add them as a friend, it asks you, do you want it to, so it's in sync with your Skype program. So they add, if you add them on that site, it automatically adds them to your Skype contact list, contact list, which makes it so convenient. So I really recommend that you try that Skype in the Classroom website. Another one, I'm going to skip to number three, and then come back to number two, is the Around the World with 80 Schools. Some of you may be familiar with Silvia Solisano. She is at Languages on Twitter. Amazing, amazing person who creates the mastermind 
behind this website, which is a similar concept that's kept in the classroom. You log in, it's free to register, create an account, put a profile picture, and you can be as specific as you want with either of these websites. I would recommend that you be specific. Say you teach your grades, maybe say what state you teach, and if you can't mention your school, just say what state, like I said, had you in Mississippi, second through the state of Gifted, and I'm looking to do this. And you put these little profiles up, and people will find you. They will comment on your project. And you, again, you can add them, kind of like Facebook, you add them as friends, and you get together there. So those are really good places to start. Some other two places that are a little more involved, but worth mentioning, is for number two, as you see here, the CILC website, which stands for Center for Interactive Learning Community. And basically, what you do there is the same, it's the same concept for all of them. You create your profile, but they just want you to be specific about what you're looking for in the collaboration, because this one is mostly a video conferencing call, so I have to be specific and say, we don't have video conferencing equipment, we're doing this in Skype. But I still got a lot of people, a lot of gifted classes got, um, got in contact with me through that CILC website. So it's another good site to know. And same thing with the CAC space. That one stands for Collaborations Around the Planet. And that's another good site to try out and check it out. And I'm going to have all these websites, and you're asking, where are these other websites? I'm going to have a resource page at the end of the presentation that you can click on. And it's going to have all these with clickable links. And then finally, Twitter is a wonderful resource. A lot of my people here on Twitter, thank you for coming. Uh, you can meet them through chats or just through interactions on Twitter, and you will find people who are willing to Skype. And Facebook groups is another option. I'm not familiar with a lot of teacher Facebook groups, but I am familiar with the gifted group that I'm a part of. So that's a wonderful, and I Joe here in the room is part of that too. So you can find partners through there too if you teach. Now, what kind of calls can you make? Like, what you want to do with Skype, what I would recommend, is that any time, once you get that past that practice phase when you're practicing with, you know, people that you know or your own classroom, the, the, the next step beyond that is to create a learning experience that's going to enrich or extend what's going on in your classroom already. You don't want to just Skype just for the sake, the sake of Skyping, you know, because a lot of times you're just wasting time. You want to make sure you frame it to where it has that educational value. So one of the things that I did in my classroom was bring in expert voices. And so we, um, my husband helped me out so much because he has a lot more contacts on Twitter. And again, Twitter was an asset for him. He had a lot of entrepreneurs come in Skyping with my classes. And these are some of the pictures that you see from my classroom. The one down here, this is Ingrid Stav. And she is the author, co-author of The Career Within You, which is actually a career book that was written for adults. And she has a quiz in there that's called the Anagram. And it's, it's also aimed for adults, but I had my students take it just to see if, if it was accurate. And my students took it, and we kind of broke it down, and they took it, and they evaluated the instrument and said, oh, this is kind of true for myself doing this in the airport. They, they really liked what they saw, and so they got the opportunity to talk to the author herself, ask her questions about her book, and she presented the nine career types, which is what the results of the anagram showed you. So it was interesting to see that interaction. My students were so excited about Skyping, and they looked like little professionals. They were so into the call and just into what they were learning. So it just kind of brought life to what we were learning. Another thing that you can do is to Skype with authors. There are authors out there. There are actually sites out there, and I'm going to point you on um, the resource page to those uh, resources. There are authors out there who are willing to Skype with your classes, and some people charge and some people don't. It's just a matter of you know, doing your research and really making the case and saying, I really would love for you to come and Skype, you know, Skype in and do a call with my students. And uh, I would recommend for those kinds, for these kinds of the author and the expert Skype calls that you maybe come up with a free set of interview questions maybe for your students. Um, my, my students didn't necessarily have the time to do that. We just kind of did it. But I think they did a wonderful job. They, they were really sharp and knew exactly what to ask. But to make it even more, to prepare maybe even more, you may want to have those interview questions. And the last one, is the virtual field trips. And I think this is a wonderful idea. Uh, you can always um, partner up with maybe a museum, call your local museums, or if you have a museum in another state or part of the country or part of the world, then maybe you can have them set up something and maybe they'll be willing to do it. You know, maybe call up NASA or you know, other institutes, art institutes. So that's just some ideas to do. I haven't tried it myself, but I know museums have contacted me when I post these collaborations about showing exhibits through through Skype calls. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So if they're willing to contact me, then if you can contact them, you can set that up. Another way to, to use to frame a Skype call is to do a cultural exchange. And this works so well with language classes. When I taught Spanish, these are the pictures that you see of me in my Spanish classes. We got together with a class in Spain, and I had my students 
uh, apply with Thailand. They introduced themselves in Spanish, and then the Spanish class introduced themselves in English. So it was interesting to see that exchange, and we also asked questions too throughout. My students really wanted to know what they ate, what was their favorite movie, and what kind of clothes did they like, and what kind of cartoons did they watch. I mean, they were just so excited. They were so excited to see another class, and then the whole time zone thing was so intriguing. And I'm like, oh, how come it's nine o'clock here, and it's like. 3.40 in Spain, they're about to get out, for, or 5 o'clock in Spain, they're about to get out of school, and it was, it's a very good, authentic experience to bring to your students so that they can learn geography, they can learn culture, and just, you know, just connect. It's a really awesome experience. And another thing, too, when you think about cultural exchange, you don't have to necessarily think abroad. You can think within even your own country. good example of that, there's a mystery Skype call, for those of you who are on Twitter, there's this thing called the Mystery Skype Call, and there is actually, I think it's directed either by fifth grade chat or sixth grade chat, one of the grade level chats. They actually set up a wiki where you can sign up, and um, and I have that link too in my resource page you can look at. But it's, people that have done this have done a wonderful job because basically the concept behind the Mystery Skype Call is that you call into a school, you don't know where that school is or where this class is, and they don't know where you are, and through a series of yes or no questions, you, both classes have to figure out where exactly you are in the United States. So it's a pretty unique concept, and I love how there's plenty of people on Twitter, and I saved all their posts in my little resource page, like people like Linda Yolis, Sean Avery, Mr. Avery, they have outlined all this to their blog post. So I'll point to that later so you can get more information. And then finally, some other things to use, some ideas for site site calls, is uh, sharing and collaborating. Basically in my class, since I teach Gibson now, we are very project-based. So what we do a lot of is sharing what we have created at the end of the semester with another class. And they do the same for us. So you see on the top right up here, this class is our little Texas class. They did a little scarecrow unit. And they created these scarecrows and they displayed them in front of their schools, which was pretty neat. And their teacher, what she did was have them describe the process of them creating. She made it like a language arts type explanation. And they read their little stories to me, or to us, to us little stories. And we voted on our favorite little scarecrow. And down here you see my students actually now sharing their project with another school in Pennsylvania. I think it's Pennsylvania, New Hampshire. And they created a little box and they had to advertise it for their company. And so this is a great way for them to practice oral, oral communication skills and to connect with another class who also does projects. And it was pretty neat to see what the other classes were doing, for and for the gifted context that I'm in. And then finally you can do uh, extension activities. And this one down here, this is uh, my students actually after the, the Spain Skype call. Their teacher sent us these little models that you see them holding in their hands of a building in Spain. It's called um, San Negra, I think it is. a beautiful architecture. We got shown pictures and we looked at it you know, online. And she sent them the little models that we actually got to create in class and they got to take them home. And they love those little models. So it could be something that simple. It's just a little extension. But something more involved is being ready to take the next step. And uh, Paula here in the room, Paula Nagel, she's wonderful about this. She is a pro for the collaborative projects. And this is basically going a little further, where you actually create something with another class, and then you use Skype as a tool to communicate throughout the project or at the end of the project as a culminating activity. So one good example that I'm going to do this year for my gifted classes is I found another class in um, Ohio, and they're fifth and sixth graders. We're going to try to create, uh, we're going to do a shared collaborative writing project. And so what we're going to do is use Google Docs, and their class is going to start with, they're going to write a chapter of a short story, and then we're going to continue it, and when we finish our part, they're going to keep adding to it. So it's going to be like an extended project, and at the end, our hope is to create a little ebook with illustrations. We're going to have our little art, artsy people try to do illustrations to go with the story, and it's just a wonderful way to, to display what we're going to do is we're going to use our class blog. We're going to display that ebook and embed it to our class blog to share to the world this collaborative project that we have done. So that's the plan. So that's just one example. So think about maybe what you would be interested in doing. And then finally, our tip, my tip. My tip when you start is know your time zones. And even if you're in the same country, I, I made this maybe mistake myself. Uh, I assume that everyone was in central time zone, <laughs> but that's not a good thing to do. So make sure you know your time zone and take into account daylight savings time because that can always change something. And I've heard some different stories about that too. It hasn't happened to me, but it's possible. Number two, make sure you test your equipment and your program. And try to do it at school because it's, it's easier to do stuff at home and then it doesn't work the same at school. So try to do it within your school setting. And my advice actually, when I started doing this, I became best friends with our IT person because he was there the first two times that I Skyped ever. 
because I wanted to have that backup support in, in case something technical went went on. And so now I'm comfortable with it. He doesn't have to be there. So I will do that. Another thing too, you want to make sure you confirm with your contact. And I do this via email. So I always email the person like the week the week of, like a little few days before, maybe the week of, and just to let them know, hi, we're skyping at. 10.30 my time, 11.30 your time, just double checking, you know, it's confirmed, okay? So that you're not assuming that you're Skyping and then last minute they cancel on you. So it's always good to have that confirmation. Another thing too, you want to make sure you prepare your classroom. If you have, this is especially important if you have large class sizes. Um, and basically what we do, uh, instead of having the camera like show the whole class, I would recommend that you have maybe two chairs in front of the camera and have students rotate in and out to introduce, you know, the next thing or whatever it is you're going to do. Uh, unless you're doing a whole group activity that's different, like a little dance or something, it's, it's different. But if you're doing something that's maybe one-on-one, -on -one, maybe have some students come in and rotate, so it's just easier. And also make sure your, your chairs are set up because it would be kind of awkward to be like, oh, I'm moving your chairs in the middle of a Skype call. It's just not very good. And the next thing, which is very important, I always come up with when I go to Twitter chat, is document, document, document your experience. Because it's so important, I think, that we need to share what we're doing in our classrooms, especially when people are unfamiliar with Skype. So it's good to share with the parents, the community, and you can do this by starting with your, with your school website, your district website. And down here you see our district website. So our, I'm lucky, I'm fortunate enough that ours is powered through Google Sites. So I have my own little profile on the website and I post on my own profile, but I also try to push that it gets posted on the main page so that everyone can see. And more than likely, nine times out of ten, it gets accepted and approved. So that's a wonderful way to really spread the knowledge and show people what you're doing with Skype. I'm um, right here, what you see is actually my own personal blog. And a lot of you already have your personal blog. So basically what I did, when I did my little business Skyping series, I posted video and descriptions and all I did when I posted it on my district, I just copy and pasted it was there and just posted it and submitted it to my district. So try to promote that. Um, if you have the equipment that's available, try to do video, flip cam, camcorder, you know, or even pictures. So make sure that you're careful when you're taking pictures and video. I like to hit the back of the head so we don't have any issues with, you know, privacy or protection. And also, um, just make sure that you always promote it. And also, there's another thing, too, I um, forgot. We also have a paper. I have a connection with our local paper. And so I always call her when we Skype. And I also had the TV station come when we Skype with Spain. So that was pretty good so that everyone can see what it's about. And also, it's also important, too, I think, to share because I learned from other people who posted on their blog. So I feel that it's my responsibility then to share that knowledge of what I do so that maybe someone else can take that and do it in their own class. And I hope you can consider, oh, if you have any questions, I hope you can consider downloading Skype and checking it out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at L underscore Gifted. Here is my blog, languagejourneys.blogspot.com. And I'm getting to the last page, which is our handout. If you click on this link, it's going to take you to a resources page. What you're going to find is some resources, like my top favorite ones. You're going to see a getting started section. You're going to see all the sites I mentioned, the collaboration sites, I call them, the CILC, the CAP space, the Skype in the Classroom. And you can also find that around the world with 80 schools. So they're all going to be there. What I really recommend you do, though, go to the last link if you're looking at it right now. That last link that says my Deagle bookmark list, that's my personal Deagle bookmark list, I have compiled a bunch more resources, like of people, like I said, blog posts, other ideas, articles, anything you can find on Skype. Basically, I have bookmarked it in one place, so feel free to just browse through it, browse through my bookmarks, and you can also follow me on Deagle if you're, if you're ever on. So now we're going to go ahead and open the floor for questions. I hope, um, I know I was very fast, <laughs> I speak very fast. But I hope that I, I've helped you out with some tips and some resources to get you started and to take or go to the next level if you're already doing Skype. So please raise your hand if you have any questions, and we'll go ahead and um, hand over the mic to you. All right. Let me see who's got the hand up. So many people. All right. Paula. The mic is yours, Paula. Oh, you're making me laugh, girl. I, whoo. My head was spinning before, but now it's really spinning. You went fast, fast, fast. But like you said, you have a lot to share. Um, one, a couple of things that came up as you were presenting that I thought about. Um, the new version of Skype, um, Skype 5.0, 
When I downloaded it at school, I ran into a problem. So I just want to make everybody aware of it. It has a automatic Facebook connection thingy in the middle of it that you have to turn off if Facebook is uh, blocked in your um, district because it will make your computer go crazy. I had a Skype call set up for uh, one morning, and when I logged into Skype, I had just downloaded it, but I hadn't really actually tried to use it before that day. Um, the new version, I've used the old version plenty of times, and when I opened the new version, it opened Internet Explorer like 127 times on my computer. So just a little heads up for those of you getting into Skype, you are going to have to learn how to turn that particular little thing off. And I think it's pretty easy. I don't remember exactly how, but I think if you Google it, it'll be out there for you. The other thing is, um, we um, I learned this from um, Sylvia and shared it with Elle and most people I Skype with. Uh, you definitely want to have Skype jobs in the classroom because as the Skype call is going on, you want the other kids engaged. And you know, they're, they're going to listen to what's going on in the call for a little while, but if you do a longer Skype call, they need to have something that's engaging to them. So they can do research, they can back channel, they can um, do, uh, you know, figure out where that you are on Google Earth, have something going on for them. And I also always put about two or three kids in what we call the hot seat, right in front of the uh, webcam because, you know, we all get stage fright. And when there's just one at a time in front of there, unless they're the drama king or queen, they will get, like, real shy. But if there's a couple of them sitting in front of the camera, they kind of lean on each other and help each other out. Okay, I'll stop now. Thanks. Thank you, Paula, for the heads up on the, uh, the Skype new version. And I also didn't get the Skype job because imagine how fast I was going, how much faster I would need to talk or how much longer my presentation would need to be. But yeah, I have, I have a couple of websites if you look at my Beagle bookmark list on Skype jobs if you're interested. And I also have a blog post of how I did it in my gifted classroom to get you started if you're not ready for the real techie Skype job. So thank you so much, Paula, for sharing. El, did you see uh, Brian Cott's uh, question? Do you record your Skype calls? And if yes, which tools do you're using? I did not see that. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, I have not. There are programs to record Skype calls, and I have those in my Deagle bookmark list, but I haven't tried them myself. Um, but I, I, I can't even give you advice on that. My husband has a question. He's going to share. He's going to share his experience. My husband said that he was the one who he wants me to give him credit. He was recording with the flip cam my my calls, you know, outside and he wants to make sure that I gave him credit. So so y'all know. <laughs> Guys, anybody else has a question? Raise your hand if you have a question or tap it in the chat box. Okay, let me see who's got a question. It's Paula. <laughs> yeah, it's oh, Paula. The mic is yours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just thought of something else. Um, Al, I know when you were talking about the time zone differences, I did not do this uh, last year. It was one of the goals on my Skype list that got uh, pushed on the back burner, but I'm going to do it this year. Um, it's in um, the link that I shared out earlier in the, the chat room. But I want to do a Skype sleepover. And what you do with that is that you, um, you set up your Skype calls and you basically travel around the world during the evening so that you can connect with other people. It's an awesome experience and I can't wait to try it. So I hope everybody else does one too. Thank you, Paula. I'm glad you mentioned that because, yeah, a lot of time zones, we have issues with the time zones in the evening and we can't necessarily connect. So you can also use, um, for those of you who have PTA meetings at night, maybe try it then. Have the parents come to your classroom after the meeting and do a Skype call just to show them. So that's a good one. Thank you, Paula. Madam Baker, you have the mic. Do you have a question? 
If you're unsure on how to use the mic, you just have to press the square that has a microphone by the two bars on the left left bottom side of Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. I've got a question about one of the sites that you mentioned, the Around the World in 80 Schools. And I don't see where you register, and I was kind of trying to look around there and see. Do you remember? I know it's not exactly what we're doing, but... There should be a, a button at the right to sign in. Okay, okay. That's what I thought. I Madam Major, we lost you for a second. Can you can you say again? Is that better? Yes, it is. Okay. I don't know what happened. I guess I, I moved my mouse or something. Um, I was saying that I tried to register, but I didn't really see it. I just saw a place for members, and I didn't think I was already a member, which I'm not. <laughs> so I guess I'll just have to play around. Okay, guys, anybody else has any questions? Uh, Brian, again, he's asking, Brian Cox is asking, what's your experience with Skype group calls? I have not done. I haven't taken it to that level yet um, because it's a feature that you need to pay for. <laughs> I kind of try to keep it free for now. But there are people who have done it. I think I have documented some websites of people who've done group Skype calls, but I have not done it myself, so I can't comment on that. Okay, uh, Madam Baker, do you want the microphone again, or you, did you put your hand up again? I'm not sure. Okay, um, guys, anybody else? Uh, Camila asks, has anyone tried to record Skype calls with the Mac screen recorder? Did you try recording Skype calls with the Mac screen recorder, Al? I, I don't have a Mac. I use only PCs, so I couldn't tell you. Is anyone in the room, does anyone would like, would anyone like to share? Maybe anyone who has a Mac has used Skype before? Because I had no experience with Mac. Okay. I think the yeah, there was a question here. Okay, does anybody else have any other questions? All right, so I'd like I'd like to um, thank Al for this great uh, presentation. Fast but furious and very, very, very interesting. Uh, I hope more people start using Skype in the classroom because it's really, really good. Yes, round of applause for now and thanks everybody for coming. Thanks everyone for coming and I hope that you can consider using Skype and just get in, get in touch with me if you have any questions. Okay, and so that no one forgets, our next uh, session is actually a keynote by Lisa Mewson uh, in about half an hour. Um, right? Let me just check. I am getting very, I get very confused with the um, time differences and everything. In about half an hour, we have Lisa Newsom. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ceci. Everyone, give a round of applause to my moderator, Ceci. This wouldn't be possible without our moderators. It's so important. Thank you.